Good morning everyone. Good morning. Welcome to our act of worship here at St Botolph's today on this second Sunday of Advent. We meet in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Maranatha. Amen. Amen. Come, Come Lord Jesus. Jesus. We light now two candles today on our Advent uh, wreath here. Our first candle signifies the patriarchs, those who have gone before us, those who established the church in the early days. And our second candle signifies the prophets, those who have taken the good news afar. Lord, we thank you for all those who have gone before us in the faith, and particularly today for the patriarchs and the prophets. Help us, Lord, to follow their good example in our daily lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. you please sit or kneel for our prayers of penitence. Our service starts in the middle of your service booklet. It is the said service that we are using today. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. I invite you now to call to mind those things you have done which you ought not to have done, and those things which you ought to have done which you didn't. And we say together, Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that is past, and lead us out of darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself and cleanse you from all your sins, that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the collect for today, the second Sunday of Advent. O Lord, raise up, we pray, your power, and come among us and with great might succour us, that whereas through our sins and wickedness we are grievously hindered in running the race that is set before us, your bountiful grace and mercy may speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, 
to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We now have our first readings. A reading from, Saint Peter, uh, from Peter's second letter, chapter 3, beginning at verse 8. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness? waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, Strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So if you are able now, please stand for the Gospel reading. Alleluia, alleluia, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptised by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Today 
is the second Sunday of Advent. We're now on our journey through Advent together. As we travel through Advent towards Christmas, it's rather ironic that our readings in this church year come from Mark's Gospel, which doesn't even mention Christmas. Instead, he begins his Gospel, his good news, with this account of Jesus' baptism by John the Baptist. Why does he begin here? And what is he telling us about the nature of the good news he is telling? The first thing we learn from Mark about his good news is that it is good news according to God's plan, as was foretold hundreds of years before by the prophets. The Messiah they announced was, be, was to be the Saviour King, who was coming to rescue his people from their enemies and re-establish God's reign as King. The way of the Lord, also mentioned by the prophets, was announced long before it ever came to pass. John the Baptist is identified by Mark as part of the fulfilment of the ancient prophecies he quotes. What Mark teaches us through John is that this good news is one that demands radical humility. The prophets tell us that John would be preparing the way of the Lord by focusing on preparing the hearts of those who heard him. The voice crying in the wilderness announces a radical call for redirection. What John is saying is this, we're going the wrong direction in life, we need to turn around. This is what repentance is. It's a changing of our mind about the direction of our life. But John's baptism was simply getting people ready, getting them turned in the right direction for the way of the Lord that was going to be revealed. John not only proclaimed humility, he practiced it, showing people just what it entailed. He also performed a symbolic act of cleansing because Jesus, the one who was coming, would administer a spiritual cleansing through God's own spirit. But how can being told you're way off track, that you're misguided, that you're wrong, how can that be good news? Does it really sound like good news to you? To many, it would be anything but good news. They're quite content, or as content as they can be in this difficult world, getting whatever good news they can from wherever they can, TV, film, books, famous personalities, the news at times, even politicians. Well, receiving this good news requires first being prepared to receive it. And that means recognising we're going the wrong direction. That's the function of John the Baptist and that he was crying, carrying out in preparing the way of the Lord. The good news that the prophet spoke of comes through God's own son, Jesus. And it's good news because, just like a blind man about to walk over a cliff would be grateful for a warning shout to alert him to what was happening, this is only good news, it's the only good news that's going to prevent us falling off our own spiritual cliff and ultimately to save us. When I was teaching in school, often my students would ask, but why was John ba Jesus baptised by John? If he's perfect and without sin. Well, Matthew's Gospel is actually a bit more helpful here because he actually speaks of John asking why Jesus is coming for baptism. There Jesus responds, let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfil all. Well, I think that Jesus presenting himself to John shows that Jesus wanted to fully identify with us humanity, even to the extent that he would enter the water to be baptised. 
So the baptism of Jesus is actually a great place to start a gospel, an account of good news. Jesus is to be the agent of God's deliverance, of complete forgiveness through a spiritual baptism. This was meant to be a tangible picture of a spiritual reality, that is, God's anointing upon Jesus. Even the picture of the heavens opening is an image from the Old Testament of God breaking into our reality on behalf of his people. You see, if this is a beginning, then we have to ask, well, where does it go from here? The good news that alerts us to the fact that we are going the wrong way will be driven home as nails are driven into the body of Jesus because of our waywardness and rebellion against God. There's a beautiful carol, Bethlehem Down, by Peter Warlock, and it puts this very well. When he is king, they will clothe him in grave sheets, myrrh for embalming, and wood for a crown. He that lies now in the white arms of Mary, sleeping so lightly on Bethlehem Down. And it's also good news that clarifies clearly, or clearly identifies for us, the man that God has appointed to bring us real forgiveness and life in all its abundance. And it will be powerfully confirmed when that man comes back from the dead. So to what or whom are you looking for good news? Well, it's really good news that there's no need for confusion. God has made it clear that Jesus is the one we need. It is the good news. The gospel that puts all other news into perspective, that helps us to discern to prioritise, to truly love and live. And it begins with radical humility from us. Amen. I invite you now to stand with me to affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Would you please sit or kneel for our prayers of intercession. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. The 
Heavenly Father, in the season of Advent, let us prepare our hearts for your coming. As we celebrate your coming as a vulnerable ba baby, let our hearts await your glorious return as the eternal King. O oh Lord, we pray for to nurture in us expectant hearts, cultivate in us a deep longing for your kingdom. You are the wine, we are the branches. Advent God, come and tend us, prune us, and clean us. Discard in us everything that does not bear fruit. Nourish in us everything that bears much fruit. Lord, in your mercy, Advent God, we pray for the Universal Church to stand firm with a prophetic voice, like John the Baptist stood up to prepare the way for our Saviour. We pray for all church leaders, especially we pray for to strengthen our archbishops, our diocesan bishops, all our clergy, and all our lay ministers. Almighty Lord, as your church prepare for your coming, sustain your church with a prophetic voice to transform unjust structures in the society and to safeguard the integrity of creation. Lord, in your mercy, Lord of love, Prince of Peace, we pray for all who are consumed with hatred, all who do not know how to accept or receive forgiveness, all who are not at peace with themselves or the world. We remember all who are anxious and fearful at this time. We also pray for those who spend these days in hospital or ill at home. We name in our hearts any people we know in special needs. As we name in our hearts those who are in the grip of suffering, help us to pray and to act that they may know your comfort and healing both now and in the coming days. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, we pray for all those who mourn these days with grief as they lost their loved ones through accidents, crime or illness. At this time, we remember family and friends of the people who died in Evanmouth's explosion.
we also remember all our loved ones who have entered into joy and peace in the glory of your kingdom. We hold them in our hearts. Advent God, hear us as we remember those who have died. May they rejoice in your kingdom. Unite us together again in one family to sing your praise forever and ever. Lord, in your mercy, rejoicing in the fellowship of John the Baptist and all your saints, we command ourselves and all your people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand if you're able. May the God of peace make you completely holy, ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We offer one another a sign of peace with a nod or a wave. As the grain once scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside are now united on this table in bread and wine, so Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. It is right, uh, sorry, we let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give thanks and praise. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word, and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image, and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord God, you are the most holy one 
enthroned in splendour and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love, made perfect in our human weakness. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation. Loving us to the end, he gave himself to death for us. Dying for his own, he set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. On the night he gave up himself for us all, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross, we celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high, and we long for his coming in glory. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Look with favour on your people and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free and fill your church with power from on high. <coughs> Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Botolph and all your saints, at the table in your kingdom, where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. As we look for the coming of the kingdom, let us pray as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Draw near with faith. 
receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who sent your Son to redeem the world and will send him again to be our judge, give us grace so to imitate him 
in the humility and purity of his first coming, that when he comes again, we may be ready to greet him with joyful love and firm faith, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to invite Pat now to lead us with the acclamation. Would you please stand? With love and compassion, come, come on, Lord Jesus. Jesus. With judgment and mercy, come, come Lord Jesus. Jesus. In power and glory, come, come Lord Jesus. Jesus. In wisdom and truth, come, come Lord Jesus. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has drawn near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And the notice is before the blessing. I hope that you are all keeping well. And I hope that you've been able to see our communications about the Advent period and Christmas. The services are being advertised and this year it will be a mixture of recorded services, those live streamed from the church and those in church where everyone is welcome. So please do look at the website or at the daily emails uh, for more information about those services and for the booking information. The blessing. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. As we await our coming Saviour, Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.